Calendly is an online appointment scheduling software that allows you to painlessly and automatically schedule meetings, appointments and events without the hassle of back and forth communication via messy emails. Hey team, welcome back to another comprehensive tutorial and if we're meeting for the first time, I'm Stuart and I'm happy that you could join us today. Now in this Calendly tutorial for beginners, I'm going to show you exactly how to use Calendly to create and automate your scheduling process with absolute ease. Now just quickly before we navigate through Calendly and if you're new to this channel consider subscribing and that way you'll stay updated with actionable videos and tutorials designed to equip you with the skills, knowledge and tools to grow your small business online. And with that out the way let's get you started with Calendly. <music> Okay guys, so let's dive in and get started with Calendly. Now, like I mentioned at the beginning of this tutorial, Calendly helps you schedule meetings without the back and forth messy communication via emails. Now, we've all probably been in that situation where we've tried to schedule appointments via email and it just doesn't get anywhere, it's not efficient and it's full of hassle. However, today what we're going to do is show you how to streamline your online appointment schedule via Calendly. Okay, so to do this and get started with a completely free account, all we need to do is head over to Calendly.com and you'll arrive at this web page. Then all we need to do is come down here and enter in our email. So ideally put in your business email if you want to start scheduling appointments and meetings for your business. So we're going to go ahead and enter our business email in here. And then come over here and click sign up. Here we just need to enter our full name and then come down here and add a password and then just click continue. Then here you'll be asked to verify your email address so all you need to do is head over to your inbox with the email that you signed up with and verify your new account. Then once you click the confirm my email link all you need to do is enter in your password again here and then click log in. And then what we're going to do is come down here and click set up later as we're going to guide you through this process shortly. So click set up later. And then here you're going to be asked to connect your calendar. But again, we're going to show you how to do this in settings. So come down and click continue without calendar. Then here you're going to be asked if you want to set up your availability. Again, we're going to skip this for now because we're going to show you how to do this when we actually go ahead and create your first event. So I'm going to come down here and click continue. And then you can come up here and select any of these that best apply to you. So we're going to click sales and marketing and then come down and click finish. And just like that, we've signed up to Calendly and here we are on our dashboard. Now what we're going to do is actually come down here and click exit because we're going to guide you through this getting started process. So we're going to set up your account and then go ahead and actually create your first event. Okay, so let's quickly complete our account setup before we go ahead and create our first event. So navigate over to account and then select account settings. Then here what you want to do is make sure all your account information is correct. So for Stuart Gould, which is myself, I want to make sure that I'm providing a welcome message, I have a profile picture and my name is correct. And that way when people schedule appointments with me, they're going to see my name, a welcome message and my profile picture. So you want to make sure all this information is correct. So we're going to go ahead and add a profile picture. And here's my profile picture. I'm going to select that and click open. Then I'm going to position my profile picture. Yep, I like that. And then come down and click apply. And there we go. I'm happy with my professional profile picture, which people will see when they go ahead and they schedule an appointment or meeting via Calendly. So make sure you have a professional profile picture there. And then come down here and edit this information. Make sure your name is correct and your welcome message. This is the welcome message they will see when they arrive on your Calendly profile. And then make sure all this information down here is correct. So I'm happy with that for now. I'm going to go ahead and click save changes. And there we go, our settings have been saved. So make sure your account settings are correct. And then what you want to do is navigate over to branding. And under branding here what you want to do is upload your business logo if you have one. So we're going to go ahead and upload a business logo. 
and I'm going to select this logo and come down and click open. And then again, I'm going to reposition this logo. So I'm happy with that and click apply. And I am satisfied with that business logo. Then what you want to do is come down here and if you like, you can turn Calendly branding off. Basically, your scheduling page, your notifications are going to have your branding if you turn this off, your logo. However, if you turn it on, then you're going to have Calendly branding on your content, on your materials. So for the purpose of this tutorial, what we're going to do is actually turn that off because we have a logo that we want to display on all our materials through Calendly. Then come down here and click Save Changes. And then navigate over to my link. Then here what we want to do is that you go ahead and change our Calendly profile URL. So our link. At the moment it's automatically generated as Stuart-37. We want to change this so it represents our brand, our business. So our business is Cindio Media. We're going to go ahead and add that in here. And as you can see, our newly created URL is available. So I'm happy with that. And what we'll do is show you what it looks like when someone clicks through to your link shortly. So what we're going to do is come down and click Save Changes. And next, what we want to do is actually go ahead and connect our calendar, our business calendar, with Calendly. And this is a vital step to actually setting up Calendly properly. We obviously want to connect our calendar because when appointments and meetings are scheduled online, we want that to sync with our business calendar. So navigate over to account and then come down and click calendar connections. Then here, what you want to do is navigate to the calendar that you want to connect with. So for us, our business calendar is actually a Google calendar. So we're going to go ahead and connect our Google calendar to Calendly. Then here, what I'm going to do is select our Google account that's connected to our business calendar. So that is under this account here. Then come down and select allow. And as you can see, just like that, we've gone ahead and connected our Google calendar, which is our business calendar with Calendly. Now you can also come over here and disconnect this calendar if you like, but I'm happy with that one calendar at the moment. We're going to keep it streamlined. This is a beginner's tutorial and with that what we can do now is actually go ahead and create our first event. So head up to home and then navigate down to your custom link that we created earlier. Now this link is what you can send to your clients for them to schedule an appointment or meeting with you. So for example, let's click it and see what it looks like. And this is the page that your clients or potential clients will see when they click on your link, when you share it with them, when you send it via email, when they click on your link, this is where they can go ahead and actually schedule an appointment or meeting with you. So now that you understand your link, let's navigate back to our dashboard. And back on our dashboard, just quickly, before we go ahead and create a new event, what we want to do is actually select each of these events here and get rid of them because these are automatically here. We haven't actually created them and we want to start from scratch. We want to create our profile from scratch. So we're going to go ahead and delete those three events. So once you've selected the three events that we didn't actually create, come down and click this bin icon and then come up here and select delete three event types. And just like that, we have a fresh account. Now let's go ahead and create our first event. So navigate over to new event type. And here what you want to do is select your event type. So for the purpose of this tutorial, what we're going to do is select one on one, let an invitee pick a time to meet with you rather than group, which is let multiple invitees meet with you at one time. So you have two options here. Today we're going to select create one on one. Then here what you want to do is add the vital information about the event that you want to create. So here you want to add the name, location, description, instructions about your event. And here you can create a link to your event. Then you have the option to select an event color for the identity of your event. So what we're going to do is quickly go ahead and fill out this information. And as you can see, we've quickly gone ahead and added information to our new event. The name of this event is Strategy Session, which is a one-on-one -on -one meeting for potential clients to help identify what they can do to essentially grow their small business online. And we've added that brief description down here, which you can format the way that you like. Now, if we come over to location, you can see that we've selected Google Meet. Now, that's because we're still currently in this uh, pandemic in a lockdown and therefore we want to meet and schedule our appointments online via Google Meet or Zoom. Now you can come across here and you can select edit 
and you can come over here and you can actually meet them in person if that's possible you could arrange your meeting via phone call Google Meet Zoom, Microsoft Teams, and others down here. But for the purpose of this tutorial, we want to arrange a meeting via Google Meet and then click Update. So I'm happy with that information there. As you can see down here where it says Event Link, I have created a unique link, which is the name of this event, Strategy Session, and that is our link. So basically what I could do is copy this entire custom link here and send that directly to my potential clients to book an online strategy session with myself via this link. And then down here we have event color, and this is basically just the color label of your event. So we've color coded this event as orange. And then once you've gone ahead and added all this information here, come down and click next. And this is where we can edit the finer details about our new event. So for example, over here we've got event duration. How long do we want the meeting to last? 30 minutes, 45, 60, or we can customize how long the duration of the meeting is. I'm happy with 45 minutes. Then down here we have date range. Events can be scheduled over 60 calendar days. So basically my potential clients can book up to 60 days from today. I'm happy with that. You can edit that if you like. Then down here we have event time zone. Your viewing times in Auckland time. Your invitees will see your availability in their local time zone. I recommend keeping that as local time zone for your invitees, especially if you're arranging meetings or appointments with people overseas in different time zones then keep this availability the way that it is. However, you can edit this if you like. For example, if it's an in-person meeting, then you want the time zone to be the same. So again, you can edit that if you like. I'm happy with that for now. Then down on availability, set your available hours when people can schedule meetings with you. Again, this is just the time of day that you are available and you can customize these the way that you like. So for example, on Monday through to Friday, I'm available from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. However, I'm not available on Sunday or Saturday. Now, if you want to edit any of these days, for example, I could come over to Monday and select Monday, and I can come up here and edit my availability. So at the moment, 9 a.m. through to 5 p.m., I am available. I could change this to, for example, 7 a.m. Monday's a busy day for us. And then I could change this to, say, 7 p.m. And then I could come down here and select new interval. And basically, this allows me to split up my day. So at the moment, I could go 7 a.m. through to, say, 12 p.m. So let's get rid of that. And then down here, I could go maybe 2 p.m through to 5 p.m. And I'm happy with those two intervals during that Monday. Then I could come down here and select a new interval if I like and break up the day further. I could select I'm unavailable. I could apply this to the 19th of October only or apply to all Mondays. So for example, if every Monday looks like this, then I could come down here and select apply to all Mondays. And then if I come down here and select show more, you can see that every Monday is the same, 7 a.m. till 12 p.m. and then 2 p.m. till 5 p.m. And every Monday is the same. Then again, I could come over to Tuesday and maybe I want Tuesdays off so I could select I'm unavailable. And then I could apply to all Tuesdays or just this Tuesday. But I'm going to apply to all Tuesdays. And as you can see, Tuesdays are now free. So you can customize your calendar the way that you like. Then what you want to do is navigate over to advanced and here is just where you have more advanced settings when it comes to the availability of your calendar. So down here under availability increments, you can see that we can show increments of up to 60 minutes between meetings. I'm happy with 30 minutes. And then down here we have maximum number of events per day. So for us, we're going to go three. That is our limit each day. We can have up to three bookings per day day then down here we have minimum scheduling notice so use this setting to prevent last minute events prevent events less than four hours or you can select essentially as much as you like i like to leave this as 24 hours because i like to have a decent amount of time to prepare for meetings so prevent events less than 24 hours away you can change this the way that you like that suits you. Then down here we've got event buffers 
And this is extremely important. Basically, what you're doing is adding a buffer between events. So for example, if you define a five minute buffer before your events, Calendly will make sure you have five minutes of free time before your scheduled events. So how much downtime do you have before and after an event? So I'm gonna go five minutes and after an event, five minutes. So five minutes to essentially relax and you know, check my phone and just kind of breathe before the next event. So I'm happy with that. Go through all this information, make sure it's correct, then come down. And if you want this new event to go live on your main Calendly page, then come down here and click yes. Then navigate down to next. And as you can see, our new event, which is the strategy session, is now live. And basically this means that potential clients can go ahead and book a strategy session online through this link here, which we can send to individuals. Or they can click through to our main profile link and then find this event listed on our main Calendly profile. And the last thing we want to check is additional information. And we've got four points down here. So the first one is invitee questions. You can come down here and you can add questions that you want to ask your invitees. You can add those questions down here. Now you can edit this information here if you want. So we require their name and email. Again, you can edit this if you like, and you can add first name and last name. And you have the option to allow invitees to add additional guests. We're gonna untick that one. And then autofill invitee name, email, text, reminder, phone number when applicable. So I'm happy with that. I'm gonna keep that ticked and come down and click apply. And then you can add those questions if you like, but I'm gonna leave that as it is and come down and click save and close. Then we have notifications and cancellation policy. And the first thing is you can personalize your calendar invitations. For example, if I click personalize, you can come down here and you can add this information. So invitee full name and my name. So that's the title. Then we've got the body of this invitation. Then I can also go ahead and switch to email confirmations, but I'm gonna leave it as default because that is sufficient enough. So I'm gonna come up here and click close. And then you can come down here and activate these if you like, email reminders, email follow-up, text reminders. So you can go ahead and turn those on if you like, but we're gonna leave that as it is and come down and click save and close. Then with the paid plan of Calendly, you can actually go ahead and collect payments before a meeting. So you can set up payments if you like, however, this is more advanced and we're not gonna talk about it in this beginner's tutorial. So I'm happy with everything we've discussed today Okay, so what we can do now is actually go ahead and see what our event will look like from our potential clients perspective. Navigate up here and click view live page. And as you can see, scheduling online appointments is very professional through Calendly. This is what it's gonna look like from the perspective of our potential clients. It's very professional, we've got our logo here, we've got our profile picture, we've got the event name strategy session, my name up here, 45 minutes, this is a web conference, and then we have a description about this event. And then they could go ahead and they could select 22nd, then they could choose a time over here, let's say 10 a.m. and confirm, and then they can come up here and enter their details, and then schedule event. So I'm happy with that. That is how you can essentially create and streamline your own scheduling process with Calendly. And that is it for this Calendly tutorial for beginners. You should now have a good understanding of how to simply schedule meetings, appointments, and events online with the powerful scheduling software called Calendly. Now, if you have any questions about this tutorial, make sure to pop them down below. And with that said, thank you so much for watching this tutorial all the way through to the end. If you got value, make sure you leave a like. And if you haven't done so already, make sure to subscribe. And that way, I will see you in our next video. Take care, guys.